machine shop tools tips and tricks in this video I've compiled 22 separate tools if you come across these at like garage sales or uh, secondhand stores or your buddies getting rid of them hold on to them because these tools are extremely useful and can come in very handy in a pinch okay please take a moment to like and subscribe it's free and it'll help me out okay let's get started right now an adjustable mirror okay so we're not actually going to talk about the indicator we're going to talk about the mirror now it doesn't have to be a fancy telescopic mirror like the one that I have here basically one of the best things it's used for is seeing behind a spindle and seeing what your reading is on your indicator um, this guy is a cheap telescopic one um, it has lights picked it up at Princess Auto for like $3.99 or something like that. Not bad price. Small clamp vise. You guessed it, just a small vise. And as crazy as this sounds, I do have soft jaws to go into here so that I don't damage anything that I'm squishing. Uh, useful tool for polishing, putting small rads on, things along those lines. Stopwatch. Okay, now you're saying, Ray, why do I need a stopwatch? Well, depending on some operations, you want to estimate your time, etc., you do need a stopwatch for. And you're saying, well, Ray, I have an iPhone now. Well, depending on the shop that you're at, you pull out an iPhone, you're going to get an earful. You pull out one of these, no one's going to say anything to you. Polishing tool holders. Okay, so when you have to polish something, you usually use a stone. Well, it depends on what you're doing, really. They also have sanding belts that go on a stick and you can polish with sandpaper that way as well, depending on what you're polishing. But there's just more, there's like hundreds of different ways of holding on to these guys. If you had to hold on to this stone and polish with it, your hands would get incredibly tired very fast. But you can go all day holding on to one of these guys. The multiple uses of rolling papers. Rolling papers. Hmm. No, this isn't some kind of 420 uh, requirement. Uh, every tool maker should have two packages of rolling papers in their toolbox. And you're like, well, why? One should be a player's, and the other one should be a zigzag white. Now, I don't have my zigzag whites on me. And you're like, well, Ray, you don't smoke, so why do you need rolling papers? Well, these guys here are a thou and a half thick. And the zigzag whites are one thou. So if you have a large plate on your machine, let's say you're setting it up on a CNC machine, and you run your indicator across the top after it's clamped, and you're like, well, wait a second, this thing's out by a half thou. You can turn around and shim your plate up with rolling papers and take that half thou out. These guys come in really handy. And it has nothing to do with the whole 420 thing blade grinding tools okay so the guys are like well what is this this is a fast little jig that you make up for grinding the heads of blades they can be for dies they can be for molds so you put this in here you put this actually you need the right size one for the one that you have put this in your v-block squish this down in your v-block and you would hold your blade and you can grind this blade perpendicular to the surface indicator insulator okay I know what you're thinking you're saying Ray everybody knows what an indicator is no it's this little piece of plastic tube it's not even actually a tube it's a piece that I machined out that slides over top of here and fits onto here now why do I want a piece of plastic that's very snug that fits on my indicator well the reason behind this is if you work on an EDM machine that has a current running through as a crash protection what happens is these indicators move right and there's a tiny little spring a very very thin spring it's in a coil well when that electrical current runs through your indicator it actually can heat the spring up inside of your indicator and anneal it so therefore after a few months of using it your indicator see how this says a strong return might not return back to zero so that's why this is important 
And on some of the CNC's, they also have a crash protection on them, or they send a current through as well. So be careful with that. A magnifying eye loop. You guessed it, it's an eye loop. Now you say, well, Ray, why would you want this? And yes, you do put that right up against your eye. You can hold it, but there's a lip here. You know, when you squint your eye, you'll actually hold on to this, and then you can hold on to your workpiece with two pieces. When you're dealing with small things, or when you get a little bit older, like myself, it comes in handy. I have a couple of them at different powers for seeing the really small stuff. Screw extractor? No, this will not remove a metal screw, only wood. Okay, sometimes you need to remove wood screws or a soft screw. What you do is you grab a set of these guys. These are just a cheap Mastercraft brand. But they work incredibly well. This end here's the drill. Then you turn around and this end your easy out. Works great, actually. And it's fast and it's easy to use. Reference guides. Charts, tables, and references. I know most of this stuff is available on the internet, but it's sometimes difficult to find and it takes a while. So if you got a reference book just in your toolbox, you can pull out and take a look and say, hey, that's what I need. These guys can usually be found at like garage sales or someone selling their toolbox and they'll just give them to you or an old guy who says I'm going to retire, he'll pass them down to you. They're very difficult to find. So please don't ever throw these guys away. Thread mate, thread repair tool. Okay, a thread mate. Has a large range to it. Now it does have carbide teeth on here, if you can see that. Basically you adjust this guy to the size you want, spin it around. These guys are a little bit flexible. So as you can see, they'll go to whatever pitch that you're using and it'll cut, I shouldn't say cut, it'll clean the thread out as you go. Now why is this guy useful? It repairs damaged threads and it'll also clean out threads as well. Micro sign bar with pre-made angles. Custom made sign bar. This is a three inch sign bar that's skinny that's designed to go inside of a vise and it'll sit across the flats. You can also turn around and put this on one flat and then this bar gauge on another flat. So what I did is I made this guy 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 degrees. But if you have one size that you use all the time, you can make one size up that's a custom size for whatever particular angle you use repeatedly. Dental picks, not just for your teeth. Dental picks. Um, there's so many uses for these guys. Uh, picking small things out, cleaning small crevices and cracks, you name it. Now the cool thing about this is, if you have a regular dentist that you go to, and you ask them, hey, do you have old ones? These are store-bought ones. They're relatively cheap. Uh, they're a couple bucks each, um, but they don't work as well. The ones you get from the dentist are really strong, ergonomic handles, very nice. And last time I went there, he gave me a bag of like 50 or 60 of them, and I just gave them out to the guys. Precision drill chucks, zero to quarter inch. Okay, zero chucks. What do I mean by a zero chuck? See that? We tighten it down. Basically holds very, very, very tiny drills. Uh, what I have on the right hand side here is a cheap Chinese golden goose. And this guy here is a rather expensive German brand. Okay. Keyless chuck. Now I was very disappointed with this guy here. The accuracy of this chuck surprisingly is nowhere near the accuracy of this chuck and now it, it could be just i got a really good chinese one and i got a really bad german made one but yeah you do need to check these guys when you buy them why do you need a zero chuck for drilling very very tiny holes diamond wheel chunks okay these are the tools i want to talk about okay this is delaminated diamond Okay, so when you have a large diamond wheel and you only have an eighth of an inch of diamond on here, this is the actual chunk of diamond. I was fortunate enough to do my apprenticeship with a guy who worked in a shop that made diamond wheels and he gave me a couple of these guys. You can't get them. 
And if you know a place where you can get them, let me know. Now, why would I want chunks of diamond from a diamond wheel? Well, let's say you're sending tooling out to be titanium nitrided, and you really only need the end done, and they do, let's say, a little bit here, and you've wire cut the hole, or you've honed the hole and sent the piece out for, for a heat treat already, and you go to put it in, and it's just a little bit stiff. Well, you can't have it too loose, but you also cannot remove the coating. The only thing that I know that will remove the coating is if you spin this little lathe, put this up against it as it rubs, the diamond here will cut that coating off because it's very, very thin and it's super hard. But this guy will take it off. So you do one swipe with the diamond, then you have to clean it with a dressing stick, and then it's good to go to do another pass. But one pass will take titanium nitrite right off. And I don't know of anything else that will. Precision gauge adjustable angle V-block. Adjustable angles. You can get this guy down to about 10 minutes, which isn't bad. Used for setup, all sorts of things when you want to put, put square blocks on angles or machine chamfers or drill holes on angles. Locks in place thread file. This is a thread file. So let's say you're cutting a 28 pitch thread and you have some burrs. You could use this to clean burrs up, but most likely let's say you have a thread that's a pitch of a 28. Uh, you would use this to fix any of the damage that's on to the actual thread. You could also use a 60 degree needle file and if you have a nut you can scrape this along the inside as well with a nut to just fix some of the threads up. Useful tool to have around. Custom made tooling. Custom made tool bits. This one's done on a decal tool grinder. When you can't buy a tool to make the to, to do the part that you want, sometimes you have to make the tool. Okay, so let's say you want to recycle. So what I did here is I machined down just a piece of uh, drill rod, and then I silver soldered a carbide blank in here. So this is a lathe bit that's broken. So then I ground it down, fitted it, and silver soldered it in here, and now I have a useful tool that I can also customize the shape if I want. Precision screwdriver and demagnetizer. Okay, for this one, you're getting a twofer. So we're going to talk about the magnetized demagnetized, and we'll talk about screwdrivers, but you really can't talk about one without the other. So if you want to magnetize the end of a screwdriver, you put it into the magnetize. Then when you're done, before you put it away, rub it along here, and it'll demagnetize it. It helps picking up small bolts and nuts, very tiny bolts and nuts. <clears throat> Lots of different styles of screwdrivers, as you can see. You want to buy a quality set because if you need these to do fine assembly you don't want them breaking on you halfway through or rounding the actual bolt that goes off of here now the funny thing is i always thought that screwdrivers were screwdrivers but apparently there's an inch and metric set i didn't bother getting the metric set i thought well one will be good enough squaring height parallels yeah it's a real thing parallels I know what you're thinking, what's the big deal, everybody has parallels. Well, what makes these parallels special is that they're height. They're about an eighth of an inch below the height of a vise, the vise jaw. And we use these guys for squaring. It's a different technique than what I show with a pin, but that's another video. Micro vise with a 3R shank. Okay, some of you may recognize this, some of you might not. This is what they call an EDM vise. This vise here bolts on to this stand, and this is a 3R holder or a 3R shank, and it goes into a 3R holder. Um, in all honesty, I never actually used that. I'm pretty sure I did, and if I did, it was only once or twice. But since this is such a very small, as you can see, it's a very small vise, I used it for grinding very small things. And without this vise, there's many a jobs I wouldn't have been able to complete. 
drill gauges. Grinding gauges. So this guy here is obviously one of the better ones for grinding drills. This one here is a custom made one. You can see it being made on one of my other videos. This guy here is more for grinding tool bits for the lathe, high speed. Well, I'm glad that you enjoyed the 22 little tips. If you have tips of your own, please let me know by leaving them in the comment section below. That would be awesome. Also, if you want to see other great videos, please check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. And as always, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Thank you for watching the video and have a great night.